Hello people, this is Amner Hunter from Amner Hunter Studios. Thank you very much for following me to this point on these uh, tutorials of audio mixing or mixing music. Uh, I am very happy that these tutorials uh, has helped you in, in some way. Uh, some of you have been putting comments here on my YouTube or sending me inbox on Facebook or, or here on YouTube as well uh, about uh, how these tutorials have been helping you. And well, I have some more information. We're mixing this heavy metal, this heavy power metal song from the band Dark Ride. And I have a lot of uh, information and a lot of uh, knowledge that you can get to, to apply it to your own mixes or your clients' mixes and uh, so you can improve improve the, the quality and, and, and everything on, on your home studio. So uh, I, I really highly recommend to check my, all of my previous tutorials on this topic. There's uh, some really, really valuable information uh, on this. And well, in this topic, we are going to be introducing uh, unequalization and some of the purposes uh, of this uh, valuable tool we have in, in our studios. Uh, and well, in the previous video, I, uh, I put some information about the types of equalizers, uh, the most common uh, uses or the most common equalizers you use in both live or in your studio. So I highly recommend you to check that video. I'm going to put the links uh, right here on the screen. So well, um, to in order for us to to enter to the introduction of equalization, uh, we first need to know what an equalizer does to the sound, uh, how it works. So equalization or EQ, as is commonly uh, referred to in mixing, is the process of changing the balance of the frequency components of a sound. So, uh, uh, putting in a, in a simple uh, in a simple way, an equalizer allows you to change the volume, uh, of, but of certain frequencies, of specific frequencies uh, on the spectrum. Uh, you can you can cut or boost uh, a part a particular frequency or uh, some group of frequencies in the spectrum. All right. So first, we, we're going to take a look at the purposes of equalization. And something uh, I, I need to tell you about equalization or any other uh, stuff that you or tool that you use in mixing is that you have to use these tools with uh, having a particular reason to use them. If someone else uses or if you saw an engineer using an equalizer, they had a purpose in that. They wanted to achieve something in the sound. That's why they use that tool. So do not equalize unless you have a particular reason to do so. And there are two main reasons to equalize the sound. The first reason is to avoid masking. Okay? Masking is a phenomenon that occurs when you have multiple sounds playing simultaneously that occupy similar frequency ranges. It causes one or both of the sounds involved to be partially or entirely obscured. Masking is more pronounced in low frequencies because the lower you go, the more space your sounds need to retain clarity. And so one of the most uh, common uh, cases for masking is for example your bass, your bass guitar and your and your kick, the kick of the of the drums. So these these two instruments uh, are uh, most of the times they are competing each other for space on the low end of your of your mixes. So this is uh, some some example that I can uh, tell you about masking. So uh, for example, a piano might be my, uh, the region uh, of a piano. For example, I'm going to, to open here uh, the mixer. 
the bass, the bass guitar and the kick drum uh, are going to be competing in this area of the of the spectrum. Uh, uh, a guitar, an electric guitar, uh, has a a wide range in the spectrum. Uh, they they can be from 200 hertz all the way to 5k or more. All of this. So, for example, a piano might uh, might have also this uh, the same the same frequency range as the guitar, and they are going to be competing for attention. And 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 if they are not uh, equalized properly, they they can be end up masking up each other and some frequencies might be overlapping and they are going to lack of clarity so that's uh, one of the reasons why uh, equalization is is used to avoid masking all right uh, one important thing that uh, i can i can tell you about equalization is that equalization starts on the sound selection what i what i what i mean with sound selection when you record in the recording stage of a song, you are selecting the sounds that are going to end up in your session, right? So you you have to choose the sounds very carefully, the sounds of the drums, of the bass, of the pianos, of the guitars, of the voices. You have to, to properly choose these sounds so that they can work well together in the mix all right and we use equalization as a tool to shape those sounds uh, and to give them space also in a mix and clarity okay and well i like to look at equalization as a sculpting tool okay uh, as an artist that is sculpting and a statue for example and uh, think of it as what they do to a sculpt. They remove things, right? They are not adding things to the to the statue. They are sculpting so they can shape that statue. That's the way I like to, to look at, at equalization. Instead of uh, adding more, more volume to the frequencies, and that can bring me also s s uh, noise too, to the, to the mix, I want to look at equalizers most uh, as subtractive, all right? Uh, instead of instead of, uh, of being uh, uh, pumping the volume of the frequencies like this and here, all right? Like this, I like to look at uh, as equalization as sculpting, so that way that would be cutting frequencies, right? And instead, instead of adding uh, stuff, I like to, to take away the stuff that I don't need of a sound, okay? That's the, way I li uh, that's the way I like to look at it. So, as you know, the equalizers that use are used for this purpose are the parametric equalizers, okay? This uh, in Cubase, you have this equalizer that comes free with Cubase, and it's a four-band equalizer, and you choose the frequency, and you lower or boost that the frequency, and you have a, a gain control, a frequency control, and a Q control, which allows you to to uh, choose the wideness or how wide uh, this, this boost, for example, will affect. Uh, because as you are boosting the frequency, let's see, 937 hertz, you are also boosting some other frequencies around, right here and right here, okay? so. Uh, in the in the next video, I will show show you uh, the techniques that I use in equalization to bring clarity 
and separation to the instruments in a mix, okay? Uh, so this is an, a parametric equalizer that I use. Uh, this is also an equalizer from Waves that I use. This is an 8-band eight, eight equalizer. It's the same thing. You have the gain control, the frequency control, and the Q control, okay? Yeah. So another equalizer that I like to use a lot is the SSL channel. And this, instead of having a graphic view of what's happening on the spectrum, you only have knobs, okay? Like in a real console. So I like to use this a lot. It has, a, it has an equalizer on this side and dynamics on this side, which is compressor. But we are not going to, to move to this subject uh, yet. So we are going to only use the, the equalizer, okay? The equalizer section. Uh, all right, another another purpose uh, for what we use equalizers is for changing the sound character uh, of of a guitar, for example, or a bass drum or a voice. Okay, and equalization can be used to change the general character of a sound. It can remove remove or de-emphasize undesirable sound components such as mud or resonance. It can also change the balance of desirable sound components. Uh, it can add sparkle or brightness to cymbals, impact to drums and presence or fullness to instrument lines, all by boosting or cutting different critical ranges. The boost or cuts that one will use when changing the balance of critical ranges depend on the desired psychological effect of the part. So, so uh, for changing uh, the character of a sound, we also use equalizers um, uh, boosting or cutting frequencies. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to to explain in the next video or in the next of the next video uh, some technique that I use to hunt or the technique that I use to find the frequencies that are uh, the frequencies that are affecting the sound uh, I'm going to show you that technique so um, well those those are the things an introduction to the equalization and I hope I hope that it helps for you. And at, at the beginning, I, I remember when I was starting on this audio thing, uh, I was using equalizers, like, for example, on this guitar. I have the guitars here. Uh, I was using equalizers. Uh, I was thinking as an equalizer, like, for adding adding stuff instead of cutting or subtracting all right so for example i have this guitar and if i wanted more bass in the guitar i will uh, uh, in those uh, in those times i would have uh, at bass here, for example. And if I wanted uh, some highs or some presence, I would have boost this, for example. Okay, and that's the way I, I uh, saw it uh, at that time. Uh, but now, as I was uh, moving forward and learning more things, I learned that subtracting uh, leads to a better to a better result. Okay, I don't said I don't say that you don't boost ever in your mixes. Uh, I only say that it's uh, more healthier. It's better to to cut 
frequencies than to boost frequencies. And if you are going to boost frequencies, try to do it in a subtle way, uh, because when you boost frequencies, you can bring some noise also to to the to the sound, uh, sound that was uh, inaudible, but when you boost frequencies, you bring that noise or that um, muddiness or whatever to the sound. Okay, so those uh, are my advices on you on, on equalization. And well, thank you very much for joining me. And don't forget to to subscribe. Uh, a lot of uh, more information are coming in the in the future tutorials. So uh, stay tuned. Follow me on my social networks on Facebook. And, well, I appreciate your, your attention and support. And if you have any questions or doubts, well, let me know. I'm really happy to, to be helping you out. And, well, see you next time, boys. Bye.